We're spending 22 minutes today with Oscar-nominated actress Virginia Madsen. No matter where you go in life, no matter what you do, it's always going to be that that uh, label, right? Oscar-nominated. Oh, yes, Not it's bad. wonderful. It yeah. always feels good. Yeah. And my brother called me uh, when I was nominated, and he said that that now you'll always have an asterisk next to your name. <laughs> he said, they'll always say it, they'll always say it. It's so true, and he of course yeah. would know being Michael Madsen yeah. in, in, the, in the business. And since, since you mentioned his name, one of the interesting things I read in your bio that you kind of got your start in performing as being his magician's assistant. Yes, that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> what was well, that like? Well, he was very good at, at magic when he was a boy. Hmm. And so, uh, and I was very good at performing. And so the finale was I would get into this clothes hammer, hamper, uh -huh. and he would stab the hamper repeatedly with a, with a sword. Now, the Madsons had an actual sword in our house, I don't know why. <laughs> um, and, I, and my job was to like avoid the sword oh, from being great. Inside the hammer. <laughs> Not a plastic thing yes. that collapsed and into itself, yes, a and real then I would, sword. You know, get out and miraculously be alive. <laughs> Taught you how to do your own stunts in <laughs> yes, Hollywood, indeed. maybe, that's great. Let's talk about the new show, American Gothic on CBS. It starts on June 22nd, a summer drama. So it's a 13 episode. Is it like a, a traditional mini series, would you say? Well, I guess it's a little bit longer than that, but but it is, a, you know, you will know by episode 13 who the killer is. Who done it. Yes. Right. It's, oh, a, it's a classic who done it. It's like a great, you know, summer novel that's just delicious to read. Right. So uh, at once it's done, is there the chance like like an under the dome thing? Originally that was going to be more limited and then it was extended. Is there the chance that it would be extended or oh, is this 13 episodes? I and so. I would love that yeah. because what I'm really enjoying is like, having a long story to tell and being with these wonderful people mm -hmm. who play my children and it's not over in a month like a like a film right and and i get a chance to take this character in so many different directions and keep perfecting her and keep exploring uh what it's like to be Madeline Hawthorne, and I and I don't have to say goodbye to anybody. So, right. if we if somehow they decided to extend, I would be thrilled. So you are the matriarch, and we were talking mm -hmm. off air about this amazing house that that you oh that yeah that, you that, live in with the the, the cast. Hawthorne mansion. Yes. yes, wow, and it it is a it is a real location in Toronto, mm -hmm. but the interior are sets, enormous sets, built on two sound stages, so it's quite grand. And it's really incredible when you walk in and you see that vast stairway with the yeah. giant chandelier. Yeah. The chandelier! <laughs> and uh, and, I, and it's, I love going there because it immediately puts me in this space of being Madeline Hawthorne, you know, because mm -hmm. I can feel like, the, what if this was mine? What if it was all mine? <laughs> and because she's a very powerful, very strong very regal. woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what a, and what a cast, an international cast. And what a mm. what a family cast of characters. You have sort of the you have everybody there. I watched the pilot. You have sort of the prodigal son. You have the mm -hmm. heroin addicted son. Yeah, the, my younger two younger children are a little more fragile. Mm -hmm. um, there is my the baby who is these are all grown children by the way but mm. i call her the baby and she uh she seems to be the most normal delightful one um with a a, a nice marriage to a police detective and right. but she she's rough around the edges like she disintegrates easily mm. and part of the mystery in the show is not just the murder mystery but what happened to these people as children. Right. Why They're all a little damaged and they all have secrets. And how much of that was I responsible for? <laughs> you know? right. Those, yeah, well, so. I watched the first episode and I don't want to give anything yeah. away, but your character is um, more than initially meets the eye. Yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. How's That's that for a, a diplomatic yes. uh, summary? Uh, well, that, that ending, uh, the for ending of the first episode, <laughs> is r a real shocker. And when really? I read that, I, I mean, I, I just, it threw me. I just never saw it coming, and I thought, I've got to do this show. Because yeah. it was so unexpected, and... It's a it's a real bombshell, that's for sure. It is, and um, I I've read that you have. I mean, the people who've been working on the show, 
mad credentials. Uh, yeah. The producers uh, worked on The Americans, and didn't mm -hmm. the director work on previous episodes of the of The Good Wife, or yes. at least the pilot? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, and and you know that guy Spielberg? Yeah, he's on this too. Oh, oh, him! <laughs> oh, that obscure young kid. <laughs> yeah, well, trying to make his way yeah. in the business. I keep, right? I keep like <laughs> hoping that he's going to visit the set because it's really cool that I know he's watching the episodes. So wow, well, that yeah, is that's something. Exciting. That is that is great. So. Um, this this show um, definitely not your first foray into television, mm -hmm. but is television a more attractive medium to be in nowadays? I mean, it seems like there's just an explosion of shows and such such yeah. quality television. It doesn't seem like it used to be years ago. People, oh, you know, you aspire to be a movie actor. Oh yeah, I yeah. broke those rules. Yeah. I, yeah, I was always in trouble because I would take a TV movie because of the person that I wanted to work with, mm -hmm. and they were just like, you're. A movie star, you can't, like, if you did an HBO movie, which everybody wants an HBO movie. I right. did the first one. And when people were saying, you're doing a made-for-cable movie? Why would you do that? Which it's was such, the HBO movie? It was called Long Gone okay. with William Peterson. It was a, it was a baseball movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was just, the, so far at that point in my career, it was the most wonderful script I'd read. And so, right. of course, I would do that. And so it's, I'm more drawn to the material and not really worried about the medium. And I've turned out to be right. Right. I like right. being right. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you've also obviously um, done, still done a ton of movies, mm -hmm. including Joy. Oh, yeah. And your character, yeah. Terry, right, with the big glasses, yes. sits in bed, loves to watch the soaps. Now, that was yeah. a departure for you in terms of the kinds yes. of characters you play? Terry, Terry was a very fragile little bird, and um, who, if those who haven't seen the movie, she's kind of a shut-in and, and is addicted to soap operas, and I was the mother of Jennifer Lawrence, who was ta having to take care of her own mother. Right. And it was really an incredible opportunity for me to do character work mm -hmm. and, and, and comedy. And I'm getting much more of that kind of opportunity to explore areas that I want to go in as an actress now that I'm older. Right. And so David O. Russell, who was our director, um, I auditioned five times for that role. But did he, did he seek you out for it? Yeah, he, he yeah. sought me out for the mm -hmm. audition because yeah. we knew one another. Mm -hmm. And then he was just like, you're too pretty, you're too young, you're too pretty. And I, you know, I guess I, I was the best one because he cast me. And then I got to sort of transform, which is a lot more fun than just, you know, looking normal. They did make you look different. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was so quite a transformation. It took a month to figure out what my final look was going to be. She went through several incarnations yeah. before he landed on that. But when he mentioned it, did you think, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence, like, we, oh, we, yes. We, we could be related. Yeah, and I yes. kept saying, like, well, if, if I'm Jennifer mm. Lawrence's mom, why can't I, I should, well, I can be pretty, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he was like, no, no, I, you need to be fully into, you need to be immersed into this. And so yeah. I just grabbed that opportunity and was happy to do it. So you were cool with it. You weren't like, oh, oh yeah. I don't want to play. I mean, is, is it yeah, hard at all, though, cool to go from playing, like, the ingenue roles to going to play, like, the different the different kinds of roles when you when you you know when you age past 25 or 30 no because mm -hmm. for me it's when i found my greatest success mm -hmm. and right. and you know i just felt i was more uncomfortable in those kind of roles because you never have anything to say in the femme know? fatale roles you yes, mean yes yeah. and the and the girl next door and the um the young women may have the abundance of work, but they don't have the quality of work that I get to have now. Because I'm playing really three-dimensional characters with a career or a family, and I always have something to say mm -hmm. in the roles that I get to do now. So this is, I feel like I've been waiting a long time to get here, and I'm in a, the best place I've ever been. That's so interesting, because sometimes you hear, uh, you know, uh, some women actresses over 30 or over 40 or over 50, talk about their careers with uh, more than a note of bitterness, saying, oh, you well, know, they, all they the good must, roles are gone, blah, they blah, They must blah. stop doing that, because that's not helping. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the good news is that as you age, you know, you just get smarter, and you get more confident because of the experience that's behind you. And people respond to that. And so it's not 
about just this. And if you're, if you're feeling that way, then you, you have to look deeper inside yourself and figure out what's going on because you have a lot more to offer the world than your physical beauty. Right. And I find, anyway, as I age, I feel more beautiful um, than I was in my 20s. I just feel better about, about everything. And, and I've also been given the opportunity to um, play these roles. So to play I'm, the role yeah. in Joy, where you have this fight yes. with De Niro. And, I, and, I, and, and, and now what's funny is that I'm being told that I'm too young in my 50s. Being t well, you're too young to play that mom. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I just look a little bit younger. But I love that. I take I good mean, care that, of myself. That is, that is a very refreshing but yeah, I just and great think perspective. That women should yeah. not be afraid of it. You, you must embrace it because it's such... It's, it's a wonderful period in your life. And my mother said that in your 40s, you're free, and in your 50s, you fly. Mm -hmm. And I know that to be true now. And I don't know how I feel about turning 60. But <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> well, you would know a little bit about that yeah. only because of the work that you've done with your mother, right? Title IX Production, your production company. Mm -hmm. You did a documentary with her, right? About yes, the, it actually is yeah. all about that subject, yeah. about women from 64 to 95 mm -hmm. that are really still vibrantly engaged in life at a time when you think you're supposed to go away and get old or be invisible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people like Rita Moreno and Eartha Kitts and Gloria Steinem, and we have a sculptor and a writer and really extraordinary women who just are kind of like, it's, it's not how to stay young, it's about how to be old. Mm -hmm. And a new way of looking at being old. And to do new you know? things, right? And to do when, new things when you're and old. to That's remain what some of these women did. engaged. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, there's still sex, you know, and <laughs> and so I I just learned so much and from then and and was so inspired. There was a, you know, our nine our, our yoga instructor in her 90s, and I was so inspired that now I've I'm hooked on yoga, which is the fountain of youth, and so she these are really extraordinary women. Like I don't like when they say like, grow old gracefully. I'm like, what? I, I what don't know that what that mean? means. It's like you're, oh, <laughs> yeah. you're going to float around and, you know, be glorious. Um, I guess that's okay. But uh, I would like to grow older boldly. So. What do you What do you think you'd want to do? This I want mm -hmm. to. I'd but be I mean, acting. any, I don't know, exotic hobbies or anything that you might well, want to try. You know, my job is pretty. Uh, it's. It's, it's very hectic, my job, and, and I travel a lot with my job, and, and it's, it's, you know, you're very busy. And so when I come home, it's more exotic to just cook a meal and sit at home with your family. I mean, that becomes, uh, the more mundane becomes the more exotic when you work in show business. So I'm pretty quiet when I'm at home. And you did take some time off, right, from your career to raise... To raise well, your son. I Did hadn't you planned on taking time <laughs> off um, uh, because I, you know, my career was like it was kind of a a runaway train going in the wrong direction, and the only way that I could change my career is if I derailed it completely. How was it going in the wrong direction? Because I was just doing crap. You know, I was doing not the kind of work that I wanted to do. And I knew that the perception of me was different from what I really had to, um, to offer and what I could really do. And so I had to start saying no to projects that were my bread and butter. And Was there one project in particular or any that, that you want to mention that you thought, oof? Oh, there were a lot of those. There were, and some of them I had to do because I still had to make mm -hmm. a living. You know, I was, I was a single mother by then, and sure. um, yeah, good timing on that, Virginia. Um, and <laughs> Babies happen and so, when they happen. Yes, <laughs> there's yes. there's and, rarely any timing. And to I it. and I knew that most of the the ten years of his life, most of my time was spent with him, mm -hmm. and I knew how important that was. So mm -hmm. I struggled and I struggled and. And eventually I got my way and somebody listened and I started to, you know, you know, play characters that were more like Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I have an acting coach named Aaron Spicer and he said, people don't know you. You know, you always put on such a mask as, a, as an actress that people don't know what you're about. 
And so it was learning, you know, I went back to acting school and I started really learning how to utilize my own, um, my own character and my own mm -hmm. energy and my, um, and being comfortable in front of the camera as mm -hmm. Virginia. Was it and then I got sideways. And before that, did Cop Coppola put you in? Yes. In that Rainmaker, was, was that sort of the yes. beginning of the resurgence? Would you say? Yeah, that yeah. was the very beginning. Very beginning yeah. And and that was extraordinary to work with him because that was a very difficult role. And he, there was a you know bunch of men who had to scream and yell at me, and I get put through the ringer in this big endless courtroom scene. I have to cry a lot. And but he knew that I could take it and I wouldn't fall apart in real life because right. he was going to put me through. He knew that I could take it and I would leave it at work, yeah. which I did. So that started me on a more confident path. And you mentioned Sideways and of course the Oscar nominated role. You worked with Alexander Payne, yeah. the maker of such yeah. great movies. And when you go on, I'm sure, well, maybe, I don't know, you probably don't Google yourself, but, um, no, but I did. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things that comes up is, Maya monologue wine. Oh, it's all over YouTube. Great. And I, of course, saw the movie, love the movie. And I saw that, I watched that scene again. And just listening to you talk about how when you're a little bit older, you can bring things to the table that yeah. you wouldn't have been able to before. And you look at that, at that scene and you, there's just, you don't see an actress reading lines. Oh, thank you. You know, I mean, it was, it, it's, it's really something. What was it like working with Paul Giamatti? I, I read that you guys just clicked. We did. Yeah. He, oh, he's, he's dreamy, Paul, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, he, and I knew that we would have chemistry, mm -hmm. and they weren't sure whether people would believe us together for some reason. And I just said, just put me in a room with him, because I know we're going to have chemistry. Yeah. I just... I just had a, a real premonition about that. And of course we did from the moment we met. And How do you know when, when you sit to, to read? Is it when you feeling. meet somebody or when you read, start usually, trading lines? Usually when I meet someone, but there mm -hmm. are certain actors like Liam Neeson. I just know that mm -hmm. I would fit with him somehow. And I never had the chance to do that yet. But um, there's he's just busy certain these actors days that, too. So, yeah, he's yeah. really busy, but um, could, could happen. So I, I think, yeah, I would. Yeah. I hope that that would happen. Yeah. And uh, conversely, was there somebody who you just felt, oh, I just, I don't want to go on the set today. This is such a drag. I have no chemistry with this person. I can't create it. I can't oh, make it. Yes, that's 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 happened rarely, mm -hmm. um, but it has happened, and it's icky. That's mm -hmm. the only word I can think of because <laughs> you can't act chemistry. You know, right. it's either there or it's not. Either it works or it doesn't. It's some kind of magical connection uh, it's, uh, that, that is unexplainable, really. Mm -hmm. But when it's there, boy, the, cap the camera captures it yeah. and you can, you can sense it. And it's, and it's with, not just with the people that are playing your lovers, but the people who are playing your family and the people who are, you're having relationships with in the movie or the show. And, and, and American Gothic has that, to just bring it around, because mm -hmm. when we all met, it's one of those situations where it was like, bam, it Very just perfect. worked. Yeah. And we work as a family really yeah. well, and, and we're kind of, and we, and we all comment on it, because we're very different from one another. We all have different interests and different, very different personalities, and I think that's what makes us attracted to one another, mm -hmm. and that we've all sort of fallen in love with one another, so to speak. Right. So it's and and it makes it a lot easier to go to work. I'll that's bet. true. I'll yeah. bet. Do you think most people um, remember you for, from Sideways? Do do, do yes. people still do they like make Merlot jokes when they yes. see you? Yes, what do they and say? I, I think I should still be getting a lot more free wine in the mail, I think. <laughs> um, but there's, people want to toast me, and it's always so sweet. And, and, and I, I was recognized in Cuba for that movie, and I just thought, oh, gosh, I'm so far from home. And, and that's a real, that's an, that's an extraordinary gift that keeps on giving that movie. And, and most of the time when people come up to you and they they you know want to take a picture with you or have an autograph it's 98% of the time it's 
because they have a very warm feeling towards me and they just want to tell me that they this movie that I did was meant so much to them and sometimes it's a movie that I thought was a stinker but to them and I'm like oh thank you you know it and so it's the only awkward thing is they're like can we take a picture yeah um, okay, wait, can, um, can you wait, um, wait, wait, let me just, um, wait, how does it go? And so you wait in this really strange, bizarre, awkward space while they figure out how to use the camera. But it's, it's most of the time, and if, and, if, and if it's negative, I usually know how to get rid of them. I have a certain vibe that lets people know they just should walk away quickly. Turn, turn away, or is it an, or is it an evil eye? or what, It's what usually, it? it's just a vibe, and it's a very stern <laughs> look that seems to affect people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes you have to just, if, especially if I was with my son when he was younger, um, sometimes I have to say, no, you know, sure. this is not the right time, and, you know, I'll have to get you later. And, right. Um, so if they're disappointed, I can't control that. But like I said, 98% of the time, um, it's a good experience. It's a good thing. Um, so you have American Gothic. I know I've been looking at your website. You have a, a bunch of other projects. Um, you've worked with so many of the great, the great ones, the great directors, right? So is yeah. there somebody now you say, Gee, you know, I wish I had worked with him. At the, at on the directing side versus you know, the Liam Neeson. Well, you know, um, since Mr. Spielberg is my boss right now, you know, perhaps he might be considering me for his next film. That would be nice. Do you just his next film? Not, oh, yes. Not yes. like you have and a specific sure project would, in mind I that sure he's working on. I would love on. to um, work with Alexander Payne again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that will ever really happen because I'm so Maya to him and I'm so you know that project is is it, it was so um, it was such a huge monumental change in all mm -hmm. of our lives that right. um, you know I, I keep I keep bugging him though I hope he will. Yeah. Well, I have to ask you one last quick question. Um, I always think, no matter how great an actress is, when it's that moment when the camera is on all of the Oscar nominees. <laughs> How in the world do you <laughs> smile through that when somebody else wins? Oh, you I, mean at the Oscars? Yeah, I, I the called Oscars. it the loser cam. Because <laughs> they really, like, they want that moment of... They want to get it. They, yeah, they <laughs> want that moment of, of shock or disappointment. And, but really, by the time you get there, okay. there's a real sense of camaraderie. And I really mean this. There's a sense of camaraderie and that everyone's a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And it took so long to get there, sometimes years and years for someone to get a movie made. And if you're down to just a handful, I mean, and I'm sitting by Kate Winslet, I'm, I'm between Kate Winslet and Kate Blanchett, I, I, that was not a loss, you know, that was, that was a huge win for me because I really was the underdog. Yeah. And just for me to get onto that red carpet seemed to many people very unlikely at a certain time in my life. So by the time I get there and all the campaigning is done and, and you know, we know the decision's been made, there's not gonna be any more screenings, mm -hmm. it's your last time to be together. Mm -hmm. And so it, it makes you very romantic about the experience and, and, I, and it does, like time begins to slow down and you're kind of like but what if i do win and it, you're like a million things are racing through your head like a car accident like you know then w w what if i would you <laughs> and there's suddenly this jumble of like because i didn't have a speech you because, didn't no because i was certain that kate blanchett was going to win i just had a feeling about it. I had a real strong feeling. And you were right, right? Yeah, yeah and was I was her, right. Yeah, it was her year, yeah. So I, I was not really prepared, yeah. and, and it really was such a win for me. That night was my win, mm -hmm. because perhaps if I had gone home with the gold statue, I might have had pressure to repeat what I'd done in Sideways. Mm -hmm. I think people would have expected me to have that impact or have 
a speech that felt like that, or, and, th and that would be impossible because that's one role, you know? Right. So it was important to find other things to do. Although mostly whenever I work, there's always a speech for me. There's always like, oh, it's Madsen, give her a monologue, you know? <laughs> And that's okay, you know. Well, and a great new role now as Madeline, oh, yeah. the Boston matriarch in American Gothic, premieres Wednesday, June 22nd. And this is a summer cliffhanger, nail-biter, yeah. terrific it's drama. Really, it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And she's a very, very powerful, strong female character like I've never played before. So I'm very proud of it. Well, so great yeah. to have you here. Yeah, it was a pleasure you. to meet you. Thank you wonderful. so much for talking with us. Thank you.